Hello, aviation and space fans, and welcome to the second part of the epic Falcon 9 story. Previously, we watched the beginning of the Falcon's adventure, and now I want to tell you more about the technology. Three, two, one. Lift off, up now. Let's start with the modifications of this new rocket. There are two little nuances here. Firstly, there is no standard family line that the company produces at the same time. Well, like the Airbus A319, 320 and 321, but rather the generations replacing each other like the Boeing 737 Classic and G and Max. Secondly, SpaceX accompanies Falcon 9 operations with, let's say, very active R&D and upgrades. So, almost every other launched rocket is different from the previous one. Plus, the early generations were simply called version 1.0 or 1.1, the legacy of the Silicon Valley. I'm just glad they didn't develop the Falcon Vista version. So, let's start with the first model, Falcon 9 1.0. This index was the rocket's first generation, which appeared in 2010 and flew five times, until 2013. It was the simplest model and, in fact, a bigger version of the Falcon 1 rocket. The first stage had nine engines, generating 3800 kN of thrust at the sea level. The second engine was equipped with a single 420 kN engine. The rocket engines were inherited directly from Falcon 1, good old Merlin 1C, adapted for the atmosphere in the first stage and for vacuum in the second. The rocket had nearly 318 tons of takeoff mass. It could launch 9 tons of payload to the low Earth orbit. So version 1.0 had pretty good specifications, but it also had a critical problem for our time. It was a conventional, medium-class launch rocket. And this is very, very boring. In 2013 SpaceX realized the Falcon 9 patch version 1.1, which started operations on the sixth launch. The new version didn't just fix the problems of the previous one and give access to the new Pokemon Go game, but also made a series of aerospace changes. The first thing you could notice is the size. The rocket grew as much as 13.5 meters. At the same time, takeoff mass increased by more than a half and exceeded 500 tons. The most important technical innovation was a new engine block. In the version 1.0, the engines were arranged in three rows, making a square form, and controls were carried out by distributing thrust between them. In a new scheme, which SpaceX called OctoWeb, the engines are arranged differently, eight in a circle and one in the middle. Now the rocket is corrected by the deviation of the central engine thrust vector. This new scheme made it possible to simplify the design of the power plant, as well as to increase the controllability of the central core while returning to Earth. The engines were seriously modified, and their thrust almost reached the mark of 5900 kN. That is, again, more than a half in comparison to the previous version. The second stage received updated avionics and the same Merlin 1D vacuum, updated for the operations outside the atmosphere, with thrust up to 716 kN. Due to these improvements, the payload mass increased from 9 to 13.15 tons. Then the developers stopped treating their rockets like iPhone applications. They abandoned versions and created the Full Thrust or FT generation. Actually, SpaceX planned to develop this model from the beginning, and previous versions were steps towards it. Falcon 9 FT made its maiden flight in December 2015. This time it's quite difficult to distinguish the rocket from its predecessor. It grew up only a little bit, the scheme of the engine block remained octoweb, but appearances can be deceiving. The FT's takeoff mass has grown by another 43 tons, mainly due to the extra fuel. Which brings a logical question. How could a rocket which almost didn't change in sight grow so heavy? The answer is the same as in bodybuilding. The light fat was replaced by heavy meat. The fuel underwent intense supercooling, so the temperature of the liquid oxygen dropped to minus 207 degrees Celsius and the temperature of the kerosene to minus 6. Due to this new method, it became possible to increase the density, to pour more fuel into the same tanks. This decision proved to be very useful, though again not new. 
At one point, Soviet engineers also increased fuel density on their super heavy rockets Energia. From this point of view, SpaceX is like Apple. They didn't invent anything fundamentally new, but on the basis of an already existing technology, they've created an awesome candy. By the way, like the iPhone, Falcon 9 also goes through drop tests. More on that later. The first stage was reinforced and better adapted to return to Earth. The main changes are again in the engines, the thrust of which passed the mark of 7600 kN. The rocket's freight performance reached the maximum values. Falcon 9 FT is capable of launching 22.8 tons of payload to the low Earth orbit, which makes it a heavy class rocket next to such modern giants as the American Delta IV, European Ariane 5 or Russian Proton M. In 2017, SpaceX started to develop and test the FT rockets with new, additional solutions for modernization of avionics, engines and design. These decisions should improve operational performance. First of all, probably the technologies to return the first stages and their repeated launches. All these works are carried out within the so-called versions Block 4 and soon Block 5, the most advanced version of Falcon 9, which will appear in the spring of 2018. And now, the most interesting part – reusability. SpaceX's strategic task in the program is to return the Falcon 9 rockets to Earth, to be reused entirely. Not only the first stage, but also the second and even the fairing. From the very beginning, SpaceX took steps to develop the technology of returning stages. Even with the first test launches, the first stages were attempted to return to Earth using parachutes as NASA previously done with the Space Shuttle boosters. But the stages could not sustain stability and were breaking down on water landing. In 2011, SpaceX rejected parachutes. Instead, the work was concentrated on a more complex but promising concept of controlled vertical landing. To test this scheme at the McGregor test site, the Grasshopper test stand was created. Technically, it was a simplified version of the Falcon 1's first stage, which was supposed to take off and land. Equipment for landing was installed on all rockets of Generation 1.1, and after completing some missions, the first stages were tested for landing first on water, then on a special floating landing platform. For the reduced use of the engine and more precise control of the landing, the stage was equipped with four grip fins, devices quite common in the military. The rockets are touching down on four landing legs. Unfortunately, not a single rocket of 1.1 generation made a successful landing. But we did receive shots of quite colorful failures. The first successful return of the first stage was performed in December 2015, 20th launch, when after the separation of the second stage with payload, the first stage returned to the coast and landed on the Cape Canaveral ground surface. It was also the first launch of the FT rocket. This first successfully returned stage was later exhibited near the SpaceX headquarters in Los Angeles. After that, by the end of 2017, 23 operations were performed to return the first stages. 20 of them were successful. The landings of the FT generation's first stages were successful, even though they were still considered tests until 2016. Starting from 2017, these operations were officially considered not experiments, but standard procedure. By the end of the year, the stages were successfully returned 14 times, without a single accident. Ok, so they returned those rockets. Reusability implies repeated launches, right? They began in the spring of 2017. In March, the stage used in 2016 made its second flight. In June, the Bulgarian satellite was taken to orbit by the stage used in January. The third rocket with an already used stage was launched in October, after its first flight in February. This practice shows that so far it takes about six months to perform maintenance and return the stage to service, although the first time it took almost a year. At the same time, all that work takes the amount of money that is approximately half the value of a new stage. In the Falcon 9 program, SpaceX are paying the most attention to optimizing that work. The goal, in fact, is the indications of the standard commercial aviation industry, with its quite attractive values and terms of aircraft maintenance. 
Of course, I have to note that all those additional systems, extra fuel, landing gears do not really help the rocket in its main task, launching the payloads into space. For example, the current FT model, without all these elements, is capable of launching 22.8 tons to the low Earth orbit and 8.3 tons to the geosynchronous orbit. But this is a one-way ticket. If you want to stage back, no problem. But the indicators immediately fall to 9.6 tons and 5.3 tons respectively. You can ask, why did SpaceX even develop all these systems, if they worsen the performance so badly? The answer is simple, flexibility. Yes, an expandable version of Falcon 9 can launch 22 tons. But let's be honest, how often does somebody need to lift an entire house into space? A simple example from aviation. Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Range of flights, Boeing's Big Pride reaches 13, 14,000 kilometers. And on this maximum range, airliners take only a few flights. Do you know what is the average flight range of those planes? 5,300 kilometers. And the funniest example, Emirates Dubai Q8, 850 kilometers. Which plane? Well, it's the A380. Are those planes using their full potential? I think the answer is obvious. Space launches are the same story. The rocket with a reusable stage is able to launch up to 9.6 tons of payload. Most often, it isn't necessary to launch more. And if you need more high energy specifications, please. In 2017, SpaceX launched 18 rockets. Four of them were expendable. Now, a little rocket pornography. SpaceX originally intended to return not only the first stage, but also the second and even the ferry. The second stage was supposed to return like an ordinary spacecraft, withstanding temperatures with a heat shield and then landing, like the first stage, vertically. But this was too much, even for Elon Musk. The stage is small and during the flight it reaches more speed. Besides, it would need extra fuel and as many landing systems as the big first stage. So SpaceX put the idea on hold. But they are still playing with the fairing. Each half of the separating structure was equipped with elements of automatic correction in flight and the parachute. In the sea, the fairing has to land on the specially developed vessel, Mr. Steven, that has a wide net above it. In principle, this is a good idea. The fairings are fairly simple and lightweight, but at the same time, according to company's representatives, they cost nearly six million dollars. Maybe they can save on that too. Okay, let's talk economics. After all, it's all about the money. At the beginning of operations in 2010, the Falcon 9 version 1.0 launch cost was around $49-$56 million. In 2013 2014, with the start of version 1.1 launches, the price increased to $56 to $61 million. In 2016, the average cost of Falcon 9 FT launch amounted nearly $62 million while cargo missions of Dragon ships to the ISS, performed under the NASA CRS contracts, are estimated at $133 million for each. Drinks on the government. This pricing policy provides a competitive advantage for SpaceX over the American launch vehicles manufacturers. Atlas V costs around $100 to $150 million, Delta IV more than $160 million. In Europe, Falcon 9 competes with the Ariane 5 and its cost 160 to 120 million. However, Ariane is a European guy with a number of specific functions that distinguish him from his counterparts. A direct competitor on the global market for the Falcon 9 FT can be considered the Russian Proton M, which has close specifications and has a close launch cost, about 60-70 million dollars. So we can only guess about the prices. Does SpaceX adjust its price tag to Russian Space Agency? Or do the Russians look at SpaceX's prices? That was a long two-part story, but I hope it wasn't boring. Please subscribe, like and comment below what you think about Elon Musk's space race. Fast flights and safe launches to you.